You know how on my video where I went ahead and I um, took a look at the... Well, I went ahead and got a couple of upgrades for the system, like the 750 gigabyte WD Black Drive, and I talked about how one of the most common comments I was probably going to get was going to be, You should get an SSD. Um, maybe not necessarily that tone of voice, but basically that was what I was going to get. Well, not on that video, but I certainly got quite a few of the you should get an SSD comments. Um, even though I pretty clearly addressed it in the video. But anyway, so the situation recently arose where I actually realized that I could use the hard drive that's in here for something else. Over here we have the Acer netbook, which has a pair of polarized sunglasses on it. Um, and this thing, the drive that's in it right now is a 100 gigabyte Hitachi drive. And that's one of my spares that I actually got, I got four of them, from systems that had problems of various shapes and kinds. It actually came from a system that was dropped. So while the drive works, it is not the greatest. So, yeah. That drive is going to come out of there, and I'm actually going to be taking the 160 gig that's in here and gaining gaining 60 gigabytes worth of space on a system that I'll never use it on, but I'll have a working drive right there. So those of you who are probably not looking too far ahead are wondering, well, gee, what the heck does that have to do with an SSD? Where am I going to get the replacement drive for this? Good question. Got myself one of these on sale. It's an A-Data SX9000 2.5 inch SATA 6 gig SSD. Ultra slim. Includes a 3.5 inch bracket which I will not be using. I might use it for something in the future though. Uh, free. Scan now. Register your A-Data warranty and download free software. Yay. Standard 2.5 inch featuring built-in ECC and blah blah blah. Free Acronis download and all of that. So let's go ahead and open this. Um, I'm going to cut the tape first and then we will open the thing up because I can't find my tripod mount. That's on. So it needs to come off. I just figure I should probably mention this thing. Got this in a package of. really cheap package of uh, carabiners. It's just a little simple LED light. It's fairly freaking bright though. Also got this LED saucer thingy, but it's kind of cheapo. The only LED is that thing right there, but it it's bright. Anyway, let's open up this box. That package, I tell you, that was a lot more difficult to open than I was expecting because this stupid tab wouldn't come out. But anyway, in the box we have free software overview disk migration utility. should probably read this. Might be important. Maybe if I could get the damn thing open, I could actually read it. Disk migration utility assists purchasers of solid state drives in copying the contents of an existing computer hard disk onto the new drive. I think. Wait a minute. On a sticker enclosed in the SSD packaging is a 16 digit download key. Alright. So I might go ahead and, um. Go ahead with that, maybe. Uh, there's also a quick start guide and the SSD itself. That is a lot lighter than I was expecting. I might actually go ahead and just clone it using uh, Macrium and see what happens, but if it doesn't work, I'll definitely take them up on their offer. Another thing that we've gotten here is this. Not quite sure what that is, but I'd assume that it probably goes along with this SSD mounting bracket which I won't be using. 
So that can go back in the box and I can put all this back together and I can get this ready to go. Right now I'm actually defragmenting this disc, which is the best thing to do first of all. So the first hurdle to get over is going to be connecting this to the computer. There are a number of different ways I can do this, but I'm going to try method number one, and that's going to be hooking it up to the Seagate enclosure. I have no idea if this is going to work at all, but let's just try it anyway and see what happens. Oops, I just knocked something out. I have no idea if it's working or not. But it might be. See what happens. Well, I've got a light, so I don't know. Come on. Let's go in and see if we've got anything. No, in my luck, it didn't even bother to show up. Alright, so it should be the uninitialized... Yep, there it is! SSD! Alright, so we can now clone that over using Reflect. We'll try this method first. from the internal drive. I'll try a clone from the internal drive um, first, and then if that doesn't work very well, I'll try an image. But, let me get that started, and then I'll come back and update you on what's been going on. Alright, so that finished. Uh, it took about an hour and five minutes. Um, so we're going to shut this down, but before I actually even replace the drive, I'm just going to close that out now. Before I replace the drive, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a boot up comparison. First, I'm going to run the uh, old drive, which is this. I'm shutting it down so I can unplug the, uh, the other disk here. And I'm going to let it run just like it was an ordinary startup with all this stuff plugged in. So do it that way. This is usually off. Well, in fact, it's always off because the system doesn't work properly with it plugged in. Alright, so let's see how long this takes to start. Get your clock's ready. There you have it. So let's turn it back off, <laughs> and we're going to put the SSD in the system now. All right, so, whoops. Right, so, after that little incident, let's go ahead and get the hard drive out. The screw actually is slightly different. If you've seen my uh, T500 videos, the screw on that one is silver. This one's black colored to match the rest of the machine. It's a little bit more difficult to take out. Not much, though. Uh, and by comparison to the T500, the drive is upside down. Alright. So there's a drive that's in there now. 160 gigabyte, 7200 RPM. HES 7250, blah, blah, blah. So we're going to take this off. 
and we're going to take the screws out. I think that was the first time I've ever actually used that tripod in a video on this channel, other than the storm video that I took with the uh, handy cam. But anyway, size size wise or height wise, the SSD is slightly thinner than a normal conventional drive. If you were to take the lid off of this drive, they would be about the same size. In fact, they would be the same size. But as for weights, it's just night and day. There's no comparison at all. The SSD hands down weighs less than the hard drive. Although it's a pretty, actually, it's a pretty close race. Yeah, but obviously the SSD is lighter. Right, enough of my yak, and let's put this thing in and uh, see how boot time compares. I swear, this caddy was just, like, made for solid-state drives. There's, like, is flush with the top of that. Well, maybe not quite, but it's pretty damn close to being flush with the top of that SSD. That's pretty cool. Alright, let's see how boot time compares. But first, I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to check and make sure that AHCI mode is enabled. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Um, serial ATA. AHCI mode. Good. Oh yeah, AMT. Ah, shit. I'm going to turn that off. Escape. Let's see how, how see what boot time is like on this thing. So it is a little bit faster than the old mechanical drive. Um, so let me log in here. Okay. Oh yeah, that is <laughs> that is quite a bit faster than the old drive. You must restart your computer to apply these changes. Oh well, sure, reboot. Oh yeah, that reminds me, I forgot to tell you what the specs of this SSD were. It's about even with reading and writing, um, but it's, yeah, it's got 550 megabytes a second read and 520 megabytes a second write. So probably not the best SSD out there, but it is certainly one heck of a lot better than some of the other things that I've seen around. Alright, so we go. We've got a little bit less storage space on this drive now, but I don't care. This looks like it's pretty much ready to go. I don't have, don't see any problems at all. I'm gonna wait until my CDI program starts and I'm gonna see what happens. Um, I'm sure they've got some kind of program on there that can help you uh, diagnose your drive. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, there are eight there. Okay. Oh yeah, there we go. It's running at say to 300 because that's all that this thing supports. So okay, life herb status, SSD life left, one hour of power on, ACS2 revision three. That's good. Supports trim, native command queuing. Well, it should support native command queuing. Most drives do, but uh, well. There we go. I would say that this has been a pretty worthwhile upgrade. That's how long it takes for Waterfox to start up. Alright, so it's not exactly knocking my socks off, but at least not right now. Please don't play this video. Oh my god. Okay, don't. See how long it takes for my video editor to start up. Again, it's not really knocking my socks off, but, I mean, there you go. So, let's get on with the second part of this video now. Alright, so let's take a look at the drive that's installed in here now. 
The other thing that I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try and upgrade to the Mate 17 or Mint 17 Mate 64-bit release candidate right now um, and then upgrade it over to um, the full version later on and see what how that how that works out um, of course I'll have to remember to do that but I'll probably remember to do it anyway and what I just realized you can probably see the Windows 7 license key that's on here um, so we'll just put that right there and cover up that the drive that's in here right now thing out is one of my test drives as you can see it says test only on it. it's got a lot of bad sectors but it's a 7200 rpm 100 gigabyte hitachi travel star so i'm going to pull that out of there and put the 160 in and uh we'll do things that way one other upgrade that i made with my setup recently is i replaced the old yellow laser mouse with this mouse in a box I feel this will be much more reliable than that other piece of crap anyway. The cable is a major improvement. Let's power this up now. And select our boot device. This being the JD Secure 2 Plus. Which should bot me into Clonezilla. Hopefully this decides that it's going to actually work. Ah, look at that. It decided it was going to actually work. Or did it? I don't know. Let's see what happens. Well, it apparently worked if I just went into, or just let it boot normally without going into the boot selection menu. So that's kind of interesting. I'm not sure why that was the case. Um, but it was. So now we're up and running. And um, this shouldn't take too much longer if it works the right way, which I'm expecting that it will. The source disk is the 100 gigabyte portable, whatever, that Hitachi drive, and that's the destination. All right, so let's go ahead and power the system down, see if it worked. The other thing that I'm probably going to have to do is resize the disks in order to uh, fit in the proper size, but we're going to just go ahead and unplug that, power it back up. <sighs> Looks like it worked. Oh yeah, it looks like it definitely worked. We'll soon be able to actually try the other disc. Right now we're try installing uh, Mate 17 RC, or Mint 17 RC, I keep calling it that. Uh, you didn't have a startup sound. And that might be why. Sounds off. Where's the disk utility? There's the usage analyzer, but I don't want that. I want the disk utility. This is right there. Odd place to have it. Since I'm going to have to reload the desktop again anyway, I'm going to go ahead and do something that I haven't, well, try something that I haven't tried in a while. I'm going to try Ubuntu 14.04, and I'm going to see what it's like now after it's been a whole of, I think it's been like two or three releases since I last tried Ubuntu and didn't like it. But See what it's like. It's worth a shot, right? Since I know that I'm going to have to reinstall my desktop again anyway, 
sure, install that third-party software. Don't download updates. Wow, just the kind of video you wanted to see. Five minutes of me waiting for this stupid thing to actually move on to the next page. Wow. Did that ever take too long? Sure, we can install that now. You know what I just realized? Somebody put this tab key on the wrong way around. Now that's high tech. Let's see if it'll let me continue. Yes, it will. There we go. It's now copying files. We'll have to see what Ubuntu looks like now and if it's any more usable than it was before. Who knows, you might actually even see a review of 14.04 going up on my website. Alright, so the install is complete. Let's go ahead and restart. We'll have to see how well it works. It looks like. I'm not going to offer up my opinions just now. I might make another video later on where I offer up my opinions about the uh, Ubuntu 14.04 or something. Whoops. Gonna unplug it. Okay. This would be a lot faster booting from the internal hard drive. Well, the UI doesn't look much different from 13. I still really don't like this user interface, but... Front, left. Front, right. Wow. Apparently it has, has stereo speakers in it. That's interesting. So I guess that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and run the updater and see... Of that. I still don't like the fact that it requires that many clicks in order to launch programs. It seems kind of ridiculous to me. And that'll pretty much do it for this video, though. You don't really need to see me installing updates. So, oh wow, it stopped responding. Yeah, that's indicative of my experience the last time I used Ubuntu. But anyway, it's going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave it down below. And uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Until then.